Have you ever dreamed of having something massive in your pocket? Well, you may have something, but Realme has just showcased a prototype phone with over 10,000 milliamp hour battery. What? Now, unlike the last video where I talked about a super thin phone with a non-existent battery, this is the complete opposite. Forget the size, forget the thickness or the weight. He has 10 inch, I mean 10,000 milliamps. It is basically the size of a power bank or a laptop or an iPad. Take this random power bank, for example. It's like half the size of a phone and that's 10,000 milliamps. Imagine that in your phone. Now, just as an example, let's take some random phones. Let's just say Galaxy S25. Well, that doesn't exist, yeah? The S25 is 4,000 milliamps. Your puny little iPhone, like the iPhone, I cannot type. iPhone 16 Pro Max, 4,600 milliamps. And yes, they are way more efficient, but that's still less than half of what Realme is promising. Now, I also wanna check some of the older phones, like let's say Galaxy S5, 2800 milliamps. That sounds very tiny. iPhone XS, 2600. Galaxy S9, 3000. As you can see, the trend is up. The batteries were getting bigger and bigger. Even a modern phone like the OnePlus 12 that I have right now, that has a 5400 milliamp hour battery without the new technology. So you might be asking, what is this new technology and how did we just double the battery capacity? Well, it's called the silicon carbon batteries. Well, that's not the technology, that's how the battery... Well, these are a new kind of battery cells which come with silicon anodes instead of graphite anodes that power more traditional lithium-ion batteries. I don't really know what I just said, but makes sense. These batteries have a higher energy density, which basically means they can have more battery in the same amount of space or reduce the space and keep the battery the same. Does that make any sense? The energy density of conventional lithium ion batteries ranges from 250 to 300 watt hours per kilogram, but the new silicon carbon batteries range from 400 to 500. That's almost double the density. Now, the first time I got this silicon carbon battery technology was on stage in 2023 by Honor when they announced the Honor Magic 5 series and they managed to get a battery that had a 12.8% higher energy density compared to regular graphite batteries. Now that's not double the density like I said before, but it was quite a new technology so they still had to mix it with graphite because there was still risk of the batteries cracking or degrading or exploding. But as the years went by, well, it's only two years, but we got more safe with this technology and now we're getting crazy numbers. So on X, we have a post from the vice president of Realme and there's a video of this phone being unboxed. Realme's newest 10,000 mini ampere hour battery wow, concept Wow, 10,000. And guess what? Reveals the industry's first- Wait, does it actually have the 10,000 on the phone? I mean, I get that it's a concept phone, but how funny would that actually be? Wow, the phone looks completely normal. 8.5 millimeters. 8.5 millimeters. If you look at an average phone like the S25, that's 7.2 millimeters, but then something like my phone, the OnePlus 12, is 9.2. This phone is thinner than my phone and it has like double the battery. But it has to be like super heavy, right? Just 215 grams. 215. Okay, it's not the lightest phone ever, but then if you look at something like S25 Ultra, 218 grams. This thing weighs the same as an Ultra phone. It's basically just a normal phone. How did you fit such a huge battery into such I a- I really want to know. Phone? Its PCB is just a 23.4 millimeters. Now they had to change the size of the PCB, which means there might be less space for other things like smaller speakers, much smaller batteries, less space for cooling, and possibly worse structural integrity, which we're gonna have to wait for Jerry's video for that one. But okay, if they added good cooling, good battery protection, good drop protection, this could actually be a good battery that doesn't degrade or explode randomly. <coughs> Note 7. Now I'm guessing that this phone is perhaps not ready for the public, so in the build-up of the Realme GT7, they launched the prototype, but the actual phone that's coming out only has a 7,000 milliamp hour battery, so it's not like all of us can just run out and buy this phone. We're gonna have to deal with a puny 7,000. What a shame. Now it's not like we never had phones with massive batteries, because for example, back in the day, Samsung made the Galaxy M51 with a 7,000 milliamp hour battery without this new technology. However, it was 9.5 millimeters, which is 
like two millimeters thicker than a regular phone. But because this was a cheap plastic phone with no wireless charging, mediocre speakers and small camera sensors, it didn't really matter. They crammed the biggest battery they could, sacrificing basically everything. And, and if you look up a 10,000 milliamp hour phone, there's actually a Blackview phone that has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. But just look at the way it looks. It looks like an actual brick. Actually, Hold on a second. So I was walking on the beach one day and I found this rock that looks exactly like a phone with like a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. It's also really heavy. If you look this phone up, it was 400 grams, which is twice the weight of a normal phone and 20 millimeters. That's like three phones combined. And now we're getting this size in a normal phone body. I actually just remembered there was a video from Mr. Who's the Boss and he played around with this massive energizer phone and look at the size of this. He was holding an actual brick that was probably thicker than the brick that I just showed you. That is the thickness of like three phones, maybe even four phones. Does the page even work anymore? Oh, what is this? Was this like a fundraiser? that never reached even 10% of its goal, what? Yeah, it seems like not enough people were interested in this design. Now, what, what I don't really understand is there's a Realme GT7 Pro from last November, but then they made a new GT7 non-Pro after they made the Pro, and this one has 7,000, whereas the last one had 6,500, but then there's also a Chinese version with 7,200. How are you supposed to keep track of any of this? Also, it has 120 watt charging, but the Chinese version has 100 watts. It has an optical fingerprint scanner, but then again, the Chinese one has an ultrasonic one. Now looking at the phone, I don't think they sacrificed much to make this phone. It's not thick, it's not that heavy. The camera is fine, it even has room for an optical zoom camera. Now we don't have any battery tests, but if we go back to the GT7 Pro, the older model, we have an active user score, and if we check the results, 17 hours puts this phone in top four best phones with the best battery life. And that's with 6,500 milliamps. With 10,000 or even 7,200, this will make it the best battery we've possibly ever had in a normal size phone. Now, personally, as good as this idea sounds, I just can't help but think, why? I mean, I understand it's new technology. They want to push boundaries. They want to give the best battery life possible. I guess if your phone already lasts a day or two, why do you need it to last like a week? You know, you can just plug it in before bed. Obviously we can, so we might as well, right? But realistically, if we found a way to make the battery so much denser, personally, I would enjoy bigger cameras over like a five day battery. I'm not the type of person to scroll Reddit for 17 hours a day. And I know somewhere out there, it's you. And I also don't spend like five days in the jungle without a power bank. But anyway, I just love what they're doing with these new phones.